Please, please, couldn't I just have the appointment book? Let's just leave everything the way it is until the uh, fingerprint men get here, all right? Yes, but I have to call people and cancel appointments. You'll be able to do that later. Dr. Bauer is a psychiatrist. He has a lot of disturbed patients. Yeah, obviously, one of them is plenty disturbed. Did you touch anything? Oh, no, no. I, I called you the minute I came in. Everything is just the way it was. It's just the way it was. Dr. Bauer is supposed to be here, but he's not. That's funny. Look at the name in that appointment book. Harry Orwell. Hey, you hear what I said? What? It's blood. Mm. I'll call Manny. Dr. Carl Bauer, client of yours? Who wants to know? Lieutenant Quinlan. He was a client of yours, wasn't he, Harry? Look, the man is missing, and uh, one of his patients says he's dead. Murdered. Have you seen a psychiatrist, Harry? Uh, no. Why, do you think I need one? No comment. Did Frank fill you in? Just a little. What were you doing in Dr. Bauer's appointment book, then? Well, he wanted to hire me. He said he needed a bodyguard. Somebody was trying to kill him. I said, I'm not a bodyguard. I'm a private detective. No, oh, Manny, I don't even carry a gun, you what, know that. What made him think somebody was trying to kill him? I'm one of his patients. Say, Connors? Yeah, who? Yeah, that's it. You're always asking me favors. Would you do me one? Sure. I want you to meet somebody, OK? Miss Connors? Harry Orwell. Hello. Would you please be seated, Miss Olney? Harry Orwell is a private investigator. Dr. Bauer tried to hire him when he was told that his life was in danger. Yes, I know. Did you tell him his life was in danger? Yes, I did, Lieutenant. You know, after you gave your report to the police this morning, we got a call from Dr. Bauer's secretary. Somebody broke into his office, so we sent our men there, plus to his home. Dr. Bauer is missing. Dr. Bauer is dead, Lieutenant. How do you know that, Miss Connors? You've asked me that before. I'm asking you that again. I don't know. Where is his body? I don't know. Lieutenant, please, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I really must object. Miss Olney, are you a nurse? I've already told you I'm a secretary. You mind waiting over there, please? Thank you. I'm all right, Blanche. Harry, Miss Connors is a famous psychic. The word is sensitive. Miss Connors is a sensitive. Miss Only, please, if you don't mind, thank you very much. Miss Connors, do you think you can help us? Do you have anything, uh, something of Dr. Bowers, anything? Frank, here are some things we found. We found these in his desk. Let's see, we have. Uh... Glasses. Do you have something else you can give me? Mm-hmm. You'll have to choose, though. I have his address book, cigarette ladder, little ornament, seems like a keepsake made of jade. Oh, the jade.
something very large. It's gray. It's on water. It's a ship. Yes, it's a ship. And uh, there are some pillars. No. Pilings. They're pilings, broken pilings, like an old ferry boat landing. Yes, an old ferry boat landing. And near the broken pillars, Now. Yes, you may go. I said, are you all right? Oh, well, uh, Mr. Orwell, I believe this is yours. Blow to the temporal lobe, subdural hematoma. Here, that's what killed him. No fluid in the lungs. Guy was dead before he hit the water. You run an ID out on him? Mm-hmm. Definitely Dr. Bauer. She knew right where to look. We checked Dr. Bauer's office this morning. The only files missing were hers. Kind of adds up, doesn't it? To what, Frank? Hey, Manny? Yeah? I just heard about Dr. Bauer on the radio. Makes it police business now, Harry. Yeah, but I feel responsible. If I'd taken the case, he might be alive. It's my conscience, Manny. Yeah. What do you want from me now, Harry? Some of the details. Well, how's a ship pylons and an old ferry boat landing? Faye Connors had it letter perfect. Yeah, tell me some more about Miss Connors. Manny. All I know is that she's a writer, Harry. What does she write? Obituaries. I'm not kidding. She writes murder stories that have a very funny way of coming true. Now, pardon me. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't help you now. We're closing. I'd like to talk to you about Faye Connors. Why don't you check the card catalog? Tomorrow. Um. I have to close up now. Why are you whispering? This is a library. Yeah, but there's nobody here. Rules. Oh. I'd like to ask you a question. I'm leaving for the day. I know a place that's so noisy you can scream your head off. Nobody will hear you. Mr. Orwell, what do you really want from me? I want to know about Faye Connors. Well, she wrote three rather famous stories about murders. All three came true in every detail. Well, if you're interested, I think you should read them. I read the books. I also read some articles written by a member of the Society of Psychic Investigation. That you, wasn't it? Didn't you write those articles? Well, I want to know what you really think about it. Very well. I am a member of the society, and I do investigate such phenomena. Now, I, I suppose you know that Houdini was able to duplicate by trickery 
anything ever done by so-called supernatural means. He spent his entire life trying to find a genuine medium. Never found one. So you think fake Connors is a fake? Yes. Maybe? He hesitated. Why? Well, that's not all. I think she's dangerous. Hello. Good evening. Is Miss Connors home? No, she isn't. Will she be back soon? Yes. Well, may I come in and wait? Is she expecting you? If she's a psyche, she is. Hey, where is she? Out for a walk. By herself? She's quite capable of being by herself. Uh, is Miss Connors going away on a trip? No, those are mine. I'm going away. Now, if you'll excuse me. Miss Only. Uh, Miss Only, why are you leaving? Is that a braille tab, right? Miss Connors likes to read her work after she dictates it. You worked for her for a long while. Ever since the accident, when she lost her sight. Three years ago. Well, then why are you leaving? She still needs you, doesn't she? Miss Olney. Why are you leaving? I'm afraid. This gift of hers... Whatever it is, it's unnatural. I don't understand how she does what she does, but it isn't right. I don't want to be part of it. I, I don't want to know any more about it. I know too much as it is. Blanche? I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I came in the back way. Mr. Orwell? I told Miss Olney you were expecting me. Oh. Yes, I was. Won't you come this way? Would you like a drink? Okay. Scotch, isn't it? Yes. Dr. Bauer wanted to hire me because he thought somebody was going to kill him. And I turned him down. And then he was killed. That's why I feel responsible. And I want you to help me. I can't help you. Well, you told Dr. Bauer he was going to be killed. You told the police he was dead. And you told the police where to find him. Now, you can call it ESP, whatever you want to. But if you can do all that, why can't you tell me who killed him? I don't know who killed him. Mr. Orwell, have you ever had a dream? A dream that was so real that you could hardly believe it wasn't true. And then you were relieved when you woke up because you found out it was only a dream. Yeah, sure. How would you feel if those dreams came true? That's what happens to me. How long has it been happening? All your life? No. No, just for the past three years, ever since the accident. You don't have to believe me. Most people don't. So you see, I can't really help you, Mr. Orwell. What's the matter? Miss Connors. Miss Connors. You all right? I'm next. I'm next. 
I'm next. Miss Olney? Miss Olney! It's all right. She'll be all right. Good night, Mr. Orwell. Sometimes death is like that. All that is the unchangeable factor. A lot of questions, but no easy answers. Was it meant to be Faye Connors who was killed? Or could she have been the one that did it? But then how? And why? Check those out with DMV. She's next. That's it? That's it. You're a witness to a murder. You talk to the deceased a few minutes before she gets killed. That's all you have to say? Harry? Harry? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm trying to remember something. Well, what are you trying to remember? Well, if I could remember it, I'd tell you. Oh, come on. Really? Yes, Doctor. I've sedated her. She was pretty badly shaken up. Did she say anything? I just said it was all her fault. Okay, thank you. Frank. Annie. I want one man outside, one man inside. 24 hours? Yeah. I'll get on it right away. All right. Hey, Manny, I remembered what she said. Who said what? Blanche. What? Hmm? Well, at the time, I thought it was ESP, but now I'm not so sure. Harry, what was it Blanche said? Well, she said, I know too much already. Harry? Huh? Stay out of this place. Manny, you know how much I value our friendship. Forget it, Harry. Manny, I can't forget it. Mm -hmm. Manny, do me a favor. Go away. Manny, you owe me. I owe you nothing, Harry. Manny, what about my conscience? Harry, you don't have a conscience. You don't have a client. What do you want from I me? I want one quick look at the accident file on fake conscience. Harry, I can't. Then give me a name. Oh. The name of the attending physician. The name of the attending physician. Dr. Luis Hernandez. Manny? Yeah. Thank you. Anytime. Go? Yeah, here, look. Yeah, I remember now. How can I help you? Well, what happened? Well, it was what you expect in that kind of a car accident. She was in shock, disoriented, frightened. I remember she kept asking for her husband and her sister. But the police checked the car, routine in an accident, and there was nobody else in the car, no trace of anybody. We tried to help, of course, but with the amnesia. The amnesia? The, yeah, the patient suffered partial amnesia. She remembered absolutely nothing about the previous 24 hours. And I would imagine that Dr. Pierce looked into that Dr. pretty thoroughly. Dr. Pierce? Yeah, we, we call him in. I figured that because of the blindness, we needed the opinion oh. of a leading neuro-ophthalmologist. Could you give me his address? Of course.
What do you call this thing? Optokinetic. <laughs> That's right. Opto the optokinetic drum test. Your eyes moved, you couldn't help yourself. And let's suppose that you told me you couldn't see. This test would tell me that, in fact, you could see. Well, you're telling me that Faye Connors isn't blind. Are you familiar with the term hysterical blindness? Huh. And most people don't understand what it means. It comes as a result of great emotional shock, uh, just as amnesia does. They are both ways of denying something we simply cannot accept. Well, go on. In a case of hysterical blindness, the patient sees perfectly well. What? You what? But the patient denies that he can see. Now, let me be quite specific. On a conscious level, the patient does not see. Unconsciously, he does see, but he's not aware of it. There are giveaways, of course. Such people never fall over furniture. You can't lead them into a hole, for instance, or to the edge of a cliff. It's a functional blindness, but if it's perfectly real... Faye Connors has hysterical blindness. Yes. Is there a cure for it? No, but it can disappear as suddenly as it came on, and always for the same reason. What's that? Shock. And that. Could you tell if she were faking? I don't quite understand what you're getting at. Well, if you were asked to testify in court, get up on the stand. Could you swear she isn't faking, that she's really blind? I wouldn't answer such a question. Why not? There's no such test at the present time to tell whether a person is suffering from true hysterical blindness or, as you say, faking. Well, then you couldn't testify that she isn't blind. No, nobody could. What happened to the guards? I dismissed them. Just like that, huh? No, I got a court Even order. No, you said you're next? Yes. All right, come on, you're, you're going with me. Why? Because I want to ask you some questions, because you shouldn't be here alone, because if I ask you questions and you get killed, then I won't get answers. Come on. Some coffee, Miss Connors? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? You noticed? Don't you think I can feel the sun on my face? It's a very pretty face. Sit down, right to your right. Don't say that, please. You don't say you have a pretty face? Blind people don't look the same. They don't? That play of expression isn't there. You know, when you, you're born blind, you don't have anyone to model yourself after. And then when you lose your sight, you, you tend to forget what you're supposed to look like. Well, you're wrong on both counts. I'm the one who's blind. My authority is Dr. Arnold Pierce. Your expression changed. You frightened me. Well, I'll try not to frighten you. You know, you have me at a disadvantage. I don't know what you look like. Yeah, well, tell me about the night of the accident. Where were you going? To Tecate. That's a resort, isn't it? Yes. South of the border? Why? I wanted to get away. What for? I used to go there often. At three o'clock in the morning? I don't really want to talk about it. Where was your husband? I don't know. Cause of the amnesia? I did not have amnesia. I wish everyone would stop misusing that word. I had a concussion. A concussion, that's what it was, and I lost. I lost about... 24 hours. The 24 hours before the accident? Yes. Well, what happened to your husband? Well, I don't know. Look, uh, 
Would you talk to me? I'm trying to help you. Just talk to me. <sighs> Tell me. My husband was having an affair with my younger sister. I found out about it. He wanted to tell me about it, but I wouldn't let him. He was desperate. You see, I have money, and he didn't want to lose any of it. You have money. Lots of money? Yes. So what happened? I woke up in the hospital in Chula Vista. I kept asking for him, but he was gone, and so was my sister. And I'd lost 24 hours. I lost my husband, and I lost my sister, and I lost my sight. And in place of it, I had this strange way of seeing into the future. I'm still next, you know. Blanche's dying doesn't change anything. Blanche. I want to hear about Blanche. How'd you come to hire her? Who recommended her? Connors? Connors? Hey. What are you trying to do? Kill myself and make it come true. Isn't that what people think I do, plan these things? Everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. Time to be born, and time to die. What will happen to her belongings? A time to plant. They'll go to our family. Time to pluck up that. She didn't have any. She was an orphan. She had nothing. To kill. Time to well, then what does it matter? Time to break down. It matters to me. A time to build up. Could I have something of hers? Time to get. I suppose so. What would you want? Oh, I don't care. Just anything. Something to remember her by. Well, I'll talk to Lieutenant Quinlan. A time to keep silence. And a time to speak. A time to love. And a time to hate. time to give and a time to take back. What Faye really wanted was the manuscript Blanche was typing for. Suddenly, that's what I wanted, too. Harry, don't ask me. You know I can't let anything go on the only case while it's still in the office. It isn't hers. What? No, it's Faye's book. She was just typing it for. OK. But you sign it. You're a nice man, man. If you could leave it for me, I think I could be able to help you a bit better. Uh, well, could you read it for me now? All right. Thank you. It's a short story, isn't it? How'd you know that? Well, Faye Connor, she writes short stories. Oh. See, being blind myself, I, I read a lot of her work. Uncanny, isn't it? You think she can really foresee the future? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen roses like that before. What does that mean? That's the name of the story. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen roses like that before. Let's see. Oh, my God. Help me. My sister is dead. Or 
Miss Henry, what's going on? What is it? Just a second. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hoped there wouldn't be a body under the roses. And I was still hoping it wouldn't be Faye's sister. But it wasn't much more than that. It was just a hope. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Harry. Yeah? Can I see you for a minute? What do you want, Manny? Why do I always let you talk me into this Manny, I told Harry. you. I took the book to this guy. It was in Braille. It was the last book. I told you Blanche didn't want anyone to see it. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah? I think we got something. Assisted? <sighs> what do you got, Frank? Check with Dr. Pierce. He hasn't seen or heard from Miss Connors. What about the publisher? Same thing. Nothing. I just searched the house again. She's definitely not here. Leaves you, Harry. It does? Yeah, where is she? Well, what are you charging her with, Manny? Suspected homicide. Now, Manny, you can't do that. She's blind, remember? If I find out you're involved, I'm charging you with accessory, and it's your license, Harry. How can I be an accessory when I bring the girl in of her own free will? Most writers take little pieces of the past and store them in with memory and illusion and desire, but not Faye Connors. And I wanted to know how she wrote. And why? So I decided to talk to her publisher. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, may I help you? I'd like to see Mr. Pentwell. Oh, well, I'm afraid you can't. Mr. Pentwell isn't here anymore. He sold the company, oh, a couple of years ago anyway, just before I was hired. Mr. Carver is our publisher now, but he isn't in. Now, wait for him. Uh, I doubt if you'd want to do that. He's away at a convention, I think. In any case, he won't be back for several weeks. You're not an agent, are you? No. Private detective. Hey, maybe you can help me. I'll try. I want to know something about Faye Connors. Anything about Faye Connors. Uh, there. Just what you see. She's our only real bestseller. I guess it's all that, uh, foretelling of the future stuff. You believe all that? What, are you kidding? In the book trade? <laughs> it's all gimmicks and publicity. The last publishing company I worked for uh, turned out this book called 101 Ways to Arouse Your Husband. Oh. It was all recipes. You know, a cookbook. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's she like, personally? We've never met. She never comes in the office? Nope. Well, that's a little unusual, isn't it? Uh, an author that never sees a publisher? I told you, in this business, everything's a gimmick. She sends her manuscripts over by messenger. What messenger? The Triangle Messenger Service. You get it? No. <laughs> the author, the publisher, and the voice from beyond. It's a mystery. It's a gimmick. <laughs> oh, thanks. And no trouble. Uh, any time. <laughs> Ray? So? Oh, wait a minute, Manny. I'm trying to match up a couple of tissue slides. I hope it has to do with the Connor case, does it? No, it's a Carbon Ted DOA. What? You remember that unsolved Carbon Ted homicide? What was that guy's name? Soltano. Soltaro. Was that, about five years ago? Yeah, about that. Why? Well, I thought these two might match up. They don't, though. So Tara was osmosis. The DOA was ingestion. Look, right now, I'm just interested in Connors. Do you have anything on that body? Female, late 20s, about five, four and a half. It all matches, but unfortunately, there are a lot of women who are five, four and a half. What I need, Ray, is a positive ID on this one. Now, come over here. I'll show you what we have so far. 
This is an x-ray of the left leg of the sister, certified by her doctor. This is an x-ray we took of the left leg of the body. You can see those two breaks match up perfectly. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. The one that you took, it's got an extra break up there. Now, that probably happened long after her death. Could have been an earth tumbler, or something being moved over the gravesite, almost anything. Dead bones are pretty brittle. Yeah, well, probably is not good enough, Doc. We got the dental charts. They're checking them out now. You get a match there. That's as good as fingerprints. Here we go. Braden, can I see those? Yeah. Now, here's your positive, Manny. Matches inlay for inlay. Yeah. The body you dug up was Connor's sister, all right. Can you give me a fix on how long she's been dead? Not to the hour and minute, but figure approximately three years. Mm. It's close enough. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> It's nice to feel the sun on my face. Yeah, sure. Something wrong? The police found your sister. She did? Yes? She struggled so hard. She wanted so hard to live. And you remember now what happened to her? No, it's not as if I remember. It's more like... Where did you find her? Where the girl in the story was buried. The Rose Garden? You read it? Yes. And now you think I killed her? Well, I should, logically, but what I think doesn't matter. I have to take you to police headquarters. Of course. I'm ready. There's something in the car. Let the record show that Miss Connors has been informed of her rights. Manny, you haven't got one bit of real evidence. Oh, come on, Harry. Well, you're you... all right. I am guilty. I'd like your attorney present. I don't have an attorney. We'll appoint one for you. I don't want an attorney Ms. here. Miss Connors, do you clearly understand the implications of the statement you just made? I understand. I am... Responsible for the deaths of 
three people whose stories I wrote about. I'm responsible for the death of Dr. Harry Bauer. I'm responsible for the death of my secretary, Blanche. And I'm responsible for the death of my sister, Susan. What about your husband, Miss Connors? Did you kill him, too? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Have you found his body yet? Can you tell us where his body is, Miss Connors? I, I don't know. I'm asking you again. Did you kill your husband? I don't remember. I lost a day. I told you I lost a day. The entire day before the accident, I... I remember that afterward he was gone. Go on, Miss Connors. I'm sorry I interrupted. Now, how did you kill all of these people? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. How did you kill Blanche only? She was killed by a gunshot. Are you really blind, Miss Connors? Yes! Do you realize that only was shot 30 feet away? If you're really blind, how did you do that? How did you kill her? I... I caused her to be killed. Are you trying to say that you had an accomplice? No. Well, then how did you cause Miss Only to be killed? Look, I... I can't explain it. I don't know how it is that I predict these things, but I do. It just happens. Connors, are you trying, are you trying to tell us that you kill people by supernatural means? Brian. She believes it. You know she does. She believes it. I'm not responsible for what she, she believes. She thinks she has supernatural power. I don't care what she thinks. That's the basis on which she confessed. So? And you're going to let her. Look, I go into court with that confession, and I get thrown out in 10 minutes. Hey, you can't use that kind of evidence. That's what I'm telling you. What do you want from me, Brian? Evidence. I give that to Miss Connors. What is that? Faye, okay, take that. Tell me what it is. Well, it's a... Uh... Manny. All right, Harry, what was that about? Yeah. So? I borrowed it from the lab boys. It uh, was in the sister's grave. You took I police got, evidence? I got permission. So what's it supposed to mean? It's her husband's ring. How do you know it is? I didn't until I put it in her head. Harry, you are guessing. Well, what if I'm right? Then the husband is the man you're looking for. And he's out there somewhere waiting to get it, Faye, before she remembers it all. She remembered the sister. She could remember him next. Harry, wake up. She's conning all of us. She's a liar. She's not a psychic. All she ever predicted was she was going to do next. Now, what about my pen? I what gave it to you. You gave it to her. She knew it was my pen. She saw you give it to me because she's not blind, Harry. I'm not much of a writer, and even that's given me some benefit of the doubt. But I figured I could hunt and peck enough to finish the last three pages of Faye's manuscript. If Faye was innocent, that meant there had to be someone else. Someone who knew every step she made. Someone who knew what would be in Faye's stories before they were published. Thank you very much. Mr. Carver? Yes. A boy just delivered a new book from Faye Connors.
see, can't you? Yes, I can. And I saw you kill Susan. I can remember that now. I guess I have no other choice, do I? Free. Get your hands over your head. Get him there. Stand right there. Lieutenant Quinlan, please. Thoughts? What? I want to share your thoughts. I was just looking around. I guess it's natural I shouldn't have remembered. I found the two of them together. She wanted him, he wanted my money. She had a gun. He tried to take it away from her. They struggled, he killed her. I ran away and then the accident. Hi, Harry. Hello, Manny. Connors. Uh, would you excuse us for a minute? I'd like to talk to you for a second. Morning. Listen. Yep. I've been finishing my report and all of this. Yeah. I got a question. Go ahead, shoot. Blanche. What about her? Where does Blanche figure in all of this? Well, she was the inside contact in the house. You mean Blanche worked for her husband? Well, she did, but she didn't know it. What? He found out that Blanche was working in the house, so he arranged to meet her. He told her he was responsible for the accident indirectly, but he was ashamed to see his wife. That's why he ran away. But he was still interested in how she was doing, her progress. But what he really wanted from Blanche was to find out if she ever regains her memory, because if she regains her memory, she'd remember the killing. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know how he became a publisher? Well, when no. When Faye got out of the hospital and she started to predict things, and some of them did come true, he told Blanche to encourage Faye to write him down. Well, thanks. That way, he started to publish her predictions. And he got rich, which was what he wanted to be in the first place. Thanks, Harry. Aren't you going to stay for dinner? No, Harry. Huh? There are times I'd like to buy back my introduction to you. Goodbye, Manny. Yeah. thinking you look exactly like what I thought you'd look like. You can't win them all. <laughs> 